Hello, uh, welcome back to the second part of the cabinet restoration of the Philips tuner. Now I'm shooting this introduction right at the end because um, yeah, I decided um, to split the cabinet restoration in two parts, in two videos. Um, and I decided to do this along the way, so I didn't have an uh, introduction uh, at that specific time. So the cabinet restoration has been completely finished and um, you will see the progress of that uh, in this video. Um, but obviously this also gives me the opportunity to wish you a happy new year. All the best wishes to you and your family, your friends and loved ones for 2023. And I hope that 2023 will be a good year for my radio restorations or other restorations and I hope to make uh, to continue with the channel and to make more videos like this. Um, but for now we're gonna focus on the uh, cabinet restoration of the Philips tuner. So yeah, this has been quite a struggle for me as you'll mainly see in this video. Um, I had to restart or start all over a couple of times. Um, anyway, I really like the results so I hope you will enjoy the video. Okay, so the cabinet has been drying overnight again. Um, and I'm not sure if I like it. Uh, there is The streaking here is quite noticeable. I do think it needs a second coat, but the problem is that it's already quite dark and I'm not a, really a fan of the color. Uh, it being so dark here on, on this edge, I also screwed up. Definitely, so... But okay, I, I still need to sand it down again. Um, this side is actually quite okay. Um, yeah, so I, I first thing I'll do is I will wet sand it with 400 grit. Uh, on the tin they say, of the lacquer, they say you should sand with 240, but I, I think that it's a bit too rough. I like to do wet sanding with 400 grit, so I'm first gonna do that and then we'll see uh, how it turns out. Um, and yeah, I'm not sure if I here definitely I really screwed up this edge here. Okay, I think that'll that'll sand out. That won't be a problem. So, as I said, 400 grit wet sanding. Let's see if we can get it out or we get it more evenly. So I'm just cleaning it now a bit with water, just regular demineralized water. I do like the tint here a lot better, the only problem I have is again this edge and see now I sanded it too much and I have here some streaking, see some, some lines here from sanding so this edge is really really messed up here at the moment. Um, let me see if I can still salvage this. I think I... Yeah, there is really too much lacquer here on this uh, in this side, so I need to do a bit more sanding. For the rest, yeah, I, I think it's reasonably fine. Still not too happy with the color, but okay. Okay, uh, <laughs> yeah, um, it took me a whole lot of time, but I just sanded everything off uh, again um, or nearly everything it took me a lot of work because I sanded everything by hand especially also to make here the the corners look good because it was really difficult to get it even 
Yeah, I'm, I'm now gonna, uh, um, I think, apply a, again a layer of lacquer, but um, yeah, I'm gonna change it up a bit. I'm gonna go for the mahogany uh, this time, because I do want a bit of a reddish tint in there. And I really think that applying the other one was gonna is gonna be really too dark again. So I'm just gonna apply here one layer of mahogany, and then we're gonna we're, we'll see how it turns out. Um, I'm thinking about doing then a second layer of the dark oak. Um, not sure yet. We'll first see how this one comes out, and I'm also gonna apply this with a roller this time because uh, the brush didn't really work well for me. On, on this uh, cabinet so let's try it with the roller um, I don't think I'm gonna film it because I just want to take my time and uh, not worry about the camera so uh, yeah you'll see it when it's uh, finished okay so here we are again um, this layer of lacquer has been applied and uh, I think we have to start all over again for a second time because you see it's completely blotched I have all these spots everywhere also if you look more closely then uh, yeah you'll see <laughs> it's full of bubbles yeah it's really horrible um, I'm not really sure what went wrong here but I, I think that it was the cold uh, I think the, the varnish was too cold now I did this varnishing inside at room temperature, but the problem is that the varnish itself was stored in my uh, yeah storage cupboard, and that probably was too cold since uh, it was so cold outside as well. And I forgot to bring the varnish onto room temperature, so I think that's what I did wrong. See, it's completely blotched, so I have to get everything off again and start completely from scratch. Uh, now I have to say I do like the color, um, so that's already good. <laughs> that that uh, evolution is in the right direction. See, the color is nice, but it's just, yeah, <laughs> really horrible. Now um, I am really sick and tired of uh, sanding this thing every time. Um, I also, yeah, don't want to sand it too much anymore to not go completely through the veneer so I went to the shop and I uh, bought here some um, paint stripper which can remove varnish and paint and all these things from wood so it's specially made for wood so yeah they say here that this repairs all types of European and exotic so types of wood to their uh, natural state um, removes easily uh, multiple layer, layers of paint, lacquer or varnish, blah blah blah. So yeah, um, I'm just gonna try to apply this now to the cabinet. I'm not gonna film it uh, because I haven't used this yet. So it's also a slight learning curve for me and I don't want to be bothered uh, to do this while having the camera running. So um, let me just try this one and then you'll see the result in the video. Okay, so here we are again with the cabinet, and the cabinet is finally done. It has been around three days since the last clip that I shot, so I uh, did a lot of work here on the cabinet. Um, I didn't film any of it because I wasn't sure how it was gonna work, or um, it was quite a bit of trial and error as well. So, but I finally managed to get it looking really good, but uh, yeah, as I said, it was quite a bit of an effort. So what did I do? I first stripped off the varnish that I had put on there uh, with the the paint stripper. That worked pretty good. I did need to do two coats of paint stripper to get everything off. Um, and then the remains of the varnish, I sanded them off with some steel wool. So that took quite a bit of time. Then I applied uh, again two coats of mahogany colored varnish and this time I applied them with the brush and I made sure that the uh, temperature of the varnish was okay I also did everything at room temperature around 20 degrees so the uh, 
application of the varnish was quite okay. Oh yeah, before I put on the varnish, uh, varnish I did touch up the, some spots again, but this time with darker colored um, wood filler. And in so some places this turned out really great. Yeah, for example here is, is quite okay. Here as well, here on this side, that's also looking really good. I mean, you can still see it, but it's much better than it was. The only issue I still have here is on this side. Yeah, I uh, try to touch it up um, with wood filler as much as I could. And as you see, the coloring is quite nice, but here it hasn't really been sanded enough before applying the varnish. So this is still a bit rough here. But also, yeah, it was really difficult to fill up because it was just a small piece of veneer missing. So that's not deep at all, less than a millimeter deep. So it's not easy to fill up and if I would sand more I was afraid that I would just take away the wood filler again which happened a couple of times and I had to start over so it's not easy to fill this up so um, the last time I tried I just decided to stop sanding leave it a bit uh, rough um, but then obviously yeah you're still gonna see it so that that's the only problem I have here as well uh, this hole it's filled up in the Good. The color is okay, but you can still see it. So I did that before applying the varnish. I applied two layers of mahogany colored varnish with the brush, like I said. And then um, you had this yeah, uneven tease. The color was really nice. I have to say I do really like the color now. But you did have this uneven tease in... I don't know how to explain it. Like some parts were glossy some parts were matte um really weird um then i i got that out by sanding uh lightly with very fine uh, steel wool then i got the the entire cabinet nice and even in terms of glossiness um and then because everything was quite matte then obviously because if you sand with uh, steel wool you're gonna get a more matte finish um, then afterwards, to get this more satin gloss finish, um, I sanded it again with steel wool, but this time I put some wax, uh, some bee wax on the, on the steel wool. I used that for sanding and then afterwards you need to take off the excessive uh, wax and uh, buff a bit with a cloth and then you get this finish. And I, I honestly, I really like the result. Um, I'm really happy with how it looks now. Okay, it's not perfect. I mean, these touch-ups here are not uh, great, but I mean, it's <laughs> much better than it was. And for me, all this varnishing and everything, it's a quite steep learning curve. So I am really happy with uh, the result of the cabinet here. Uh, all right, so I noticed I forgot something here and, and that is the front edge Now I did apply some lacquer to it if I remember correctly, but I'm not really happy with the result here. I, I mean um, I'm not sure how e good it shows up on camera, but there is like a Yeah, I missed the spot completely here here. There is too much lacquer here on this side. It's quite okay um, But I'm not really happy with this front edge because uh, yeah you, you will notice this edge yeah, because it's sitting on the front side of the radio, of the tuner. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tape it off here on the top side. Uh, sand it lightly again. And then we're going to apply um, uh, just a bit of lacquer here. Uh, or the same type of varnish but with a small brush. Just so that, yeah, I, I cannot leave it like this, you see. I'm just gonna sand off the entire edge completely. Also here the the, the places where there was uh, quite a bit of lacquer because yeah there was according to me there was a bit too much even because I would like to see the yeah the plywood or the layers of plywood and if you apply too much lacquer then obviously it becomes opaque and you don't see it anymore. So I'm just gonna sand off the entire edge so that I can give it a nice even coat everywhere.
Okay, so this has completely been sanded and I'm just taking here a bit of lacquer with a small brush. Let's see how this goes. That's not too bad actually. Oh, I'm just hoping that it doesn't uh, go into or behind the tape because otherwise I'm really screwed if this lacquer ends up on top of the cabinet. But I do think that one layer will be enough because I want to still see the the nice stripes or the the, the lining of the of the plywood. Um, that's actually not looking too bad. Alright. I'm gonna leave it at this, let it dry and then we'll see the result. Anyway, I'm not gonna apply a second coat because it, I want it to be like just a bit colored so that it's the same color more or less as the cabinet, the rest of the cabinet, but it should still be a bit transparent. So um, I'm gonna leave it at this for now. Okay, so this has been drying and I removed the masking tape and now it's really looking exactly like I wanted it to look. Um, so a bit lighter in color than the, the top so that you can still see the parts of the plywood. But uh, yeah, it's matching the rest of the cabinet quite well. And also now you see here the color on the inside which is still the original varnish is also matching quite well and you can't really say that uh, this has been redone but the inside has not been redone I really am now quite pleased with the result here all right so there we have it the front plate um, and the dial plate has been reassembled and it looks really good uh, I really love how this uh, looks. In the beginning when I started working on this project I thought that this radio looked a bit basic but now when it's all nicely cleaned and shiny it looks really good I think. Now I had to here erase the chassis a bit um, otherwise I couldn't fit this metal um, plate here on the chassis um, so I had to raise it from my brackets here a bit. Because the reason is is that it yeah it it goes I mean, it it's lower than the chassis basically if you see see so it it goes like a centimeter lower than the chassis which is also annoying because if you yeah you cannot yeah if you put the chassis just like that on uh, on your workbench then it's resting here on this really thin aluminum plate which is not ideal. Um, so instead of removing the entire chassis from my bracket, yeah, I decided to just raise it a bit. Um, and then I'm still quite comfortable uh, if I still need to do some, some work on it. I still need to do some of the, yeah, a bit of work on the electrical part. I also still need to do alignment. So um, because also, yeah, you cannot align this chassis at all while it's in the cabinet. See, all the alignment is, are here on the top. So you do need to take it out of the cabinet, um, but then it's resting here on this metal plate, which is not great. So yeah, I just solved it like this for the moment. And I think it's time to put the cabinet 
completely back together. Oh no, wait, first we need to still do a couple of things on the uh, electronics. There are a couple of small details that I still need to do. Um, I also still need to do the alignment, um, or let's say check the alignment. I don't think that I'm going to really do an alignment. I'm just going to check if it is uh, still okay. But that will be for the next video. So this one I will stop here right now. Because um, yeah, this, this video is the second part of the cabinet restoration and we're basically done here with the restoration of the cabinet. So um, yeah, I would say thanks for watching. This cabinet restoration has been quite a challenge for me. Um, but thanks for sticking around and uh, I hope I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.